In this video, I want to look at how monetary policy, uh, basically mainly interest rates, are used to control exchange rates. Now, it seems a big jump from saying doing this to interest rates will cause the pound to... It seems a really big jump, but I want to go through the transmission mechanisms in which this happens. Now, this happens because of something called hot money. Now, this is large short-term speculative flows of money which travels between countries. Now what does this mean in basic English? Well it means that there are speculators who have millions of pounds and they want to make money on it and they make money by putting their money in whichever country will pay them the highest interest on their saving and so they do this and then if suddenly they put if they put um, for example one million pounds in the UK because interest rates let's say were 4.75 percent then they saw in um, I don't know, in the States, it was 5% interest rates, they would quickly move, uh, take their money, convert it to dollars and put it there. And because these are large sums of money, they affect um, the basically ex exchange rates. And uh, interest rates is the cost of borrowing money and the reward for saving money. So that's just a quick definition. But we're more looking at the reward for saving money because we're not looking about people borrowing, we're looking about people who are saving. So um, that is basically the starting and introduction into my video. And then if we were to look at interest rates in the UK, let's say, if we were to tighten interest rates, that means they would go up. If we were to loosen, that means they would go down. And a way to remember this is, if I'm standing here as an average consumer, um, I pay mortgage on my house, I earn a fixed salary, my mortgage is at, is at a variable rate. If I tighten uh, um, monetary policy, it's like the screw gets tightened in my head. That means the mortgage interest I pay increases. So that means I, I'm really stiff. I can't buy that many things because the interest rates have gone up and I have to pay more for my house and my disposable income decreases. If it loosens the monetary policy, I can relax, I can order myself a TV because I don't even have to pay. But that's theory. And I don't want to go into the reality of that. I just want a quick reminder of what is tight and loose monetary policy. So if we tighten monetary policy, let's say we increase interest rates, the MPC decide to increase it, let's say to 5%. It's a good value. Um, they will earn, um, the, the speculators will see where they will earn more interest. And let's suppose the UK had the highest interest rate. It was 5%. So all the speculators, they came with their millions of pounds to put into UK banks. Now, in order to do this, they have to buy the pound. Now, the pound, as I talked in my exchange rate video, is just like any other object like this pen. It's, it's the same kind of thing. If there is more demand, the price goes up. If there is more supply, the price goes down. It's like that. So if... There are all these speculators suddenly demanding the pound because they want to convert to the pound to put in the savings to um, get the highest interest rates. Then this means that the price of the pound goes up. Now we don't say the price of the pound because we are looking at the price of the pounds compared to the price of the euro or compared to the price of the dollar. So if they want to put money here, invest here, they will have to demand the pound and this will increase the uh, pound's value in terms of the other countries because suddenly everyone's demanding and they're on a basic demand supply diagram. If you increase demand, price goes up. Same kind of thing. Whereas for the rest of the world, they would probably stay there, whereas the UK would probably shift there. So that's what would happen. And we would say this is a strong sterling because the pound has gone up in value. It's strong. Now, rather than trying to think what's going to be the effects of a strong pound in terms of imports, exports, let's just use my formula, spiced. Strong pound, imports cheap, exports dear. Okay, so in the exam, you don't even need to sit through thinking about the transmission mechanism unless you're explaining it. So now we have strong pound. That means that imports are suddenly going to be cheaper because now our pound can buy more. So instead of one pound equals one euro, it might be one pound equals five euros. It's a big jump, but I'm just saying, for example, so what we could buy before with one pound, we can buy five times more now with one pound, um, believing that all the prices stay the same. So <clears throat> that means we, are, we'll, we will probably buy um, import more because, you know, it's become cheap for us. 
exports become dear, they become expensive because people suddenly think that it's five times the price because they don't have that money to buy that much of the pound because already all these speculators have and pushed the price up so much. So when they have to convert to the pound to um, export items, it's very expensive for them. So um, exports are likely to go down. If there's more imports and less exports, then we have a leakage, an economic leakage. And this basically means that money is leaking from the economy into other countries, which is just like extra money. It's like an injection for them because we're buying stuff off them, which is not particularly good, I would say, for the economy. <laughs> And it also means that if we have increased imports and decreased exports, we're left with a larger negative figure because remember it's x minus x, um, no, it's plus x minus m, but we're left with um, a kind of bigger negative figure. So that would mean that aggregate demand would also decrease in the formula. And then well, let's, to wrap this video up, let's just remind us of what are the sort of issues surrounding aggregate demand falling. Well, if aggregate demand decreases when it's at the bottleneck of the supply curve, aggregate supply curve, then what would happen is the price level would decrease because it would go like that and then the price level would decrease and that would mean that might be good for if, if the country had high inflation let's say unemployment would increase because your output gap is increasing moving further away from yfe um gdp would also drop which kind of goes with unemployment so you know you're moving this way and balance of payments as we already mentioned if imports increase and exports um sort of decrease then it's likely that your balance of payments permission, uh, position will worsen because the UK is already in a deficit and by increasing imports our trade deficit will basically increase. I hope this video has helped. Please visit my blog.